A day after an airstrike was carried out on a gathering of bandit militias in Zamfara, soldiers have been deployed to the area. Nigeria's Air Force confirmed it carried out bombardments, but a spokesperson says he could not yet provide details on the numbers killed. In the aftermath of the airstrikes, homes stand abandoned and cattle lie dead in the fields. The gangs being targeted are notorious for mass kidnappings from schools and colleges in recent years, maintain camps hidden in a vast forest straddling Zamfara, Katana, Kaduna and Niger states. Now joining me to further discuss this is Ahmed Musa Husseini. He is a public affairs commentator. Thank you for joining me on News Central now, Ahmed. Thank you. All right, so how do you think the successful rescue of the kidnapped students by the 177 Guards Battalion will impact the overall security situation in Nasarawa State and also in Nigeria as a whole? Um, I think it is a, a very interesting development. I think it is a very good job from our military and it demonstrates, I think, our capability, our, the, you know, ability or the capacity of our military or our security agencies, you know, to actually confront those criminals and, you know, use uh, a coercive, you know, and whatever other, you know, available means, you know, to rescue our students. Because uh, we have to, you know, send a message to those kind of criminals that we have the capacity to go get them, to rescue our people, and also to, you know, deny them any operational space, to flush them out of their hiding places. I thought this is a very strong message from our military, from our security agencies. And I think they need to ramp up the tempo, they need to, you know, um, you know, turn the heat on, you know, those criminals to deny them any operational space. Because if you look at Nasara State, Nasara State is, um, you know, in the, you know, central Nigeria and it borders, you know, states like Adama and the FCT. And also the states like Kaduna, I mean, and the FCT. And if you look at Kaduna, you know, we have, uh, you know, cases of kidnapping, uh, you know, been, you know, there for a long while. So if you look at the whole geography of, you know, the states, so it is very easy for criminals to coordinate, you know, and move across, you know, these borders, you know, and to perpetrate their criminal activities. So seeing the military, you know, taking up, you know, this kind of, you know, making this kind of successes against the kidnappers will actually send a strong message for any criminal group that, we have the capacity to get them to, you know, fly them out of their hiding places and, you know, to deny them any space that they think they can operate. So it All is right. a very welcome moment. Uh, we're talking about having the capacity and earlier you did talk about using a coercive uh, force to be able to flush these bandits out. Uh, what specific measures uh, do you believe should be taken to prevent further incidents of mass kidnappings like this by bandit militias in Nigeria? Yeah, I think we need to, the government actually need to employ, you know, a mix of, you know, approaches, so like an integrated form of approaches that involves both coercive and non-coercive means. So that's what we call the carrot and stick approach, because, you know, uh, we have the criminality that we need to confront using force, using military might or whatever, you know, kind of ability that we can, you know, deploy, you know, to to uh, overcome that, to, to, you know, to obtain that challenge. And then on the other side, also, we have some kind of underlying social, cultural, and economic factors that are fueling this crisis, and we need to also address them separately. So it is a kind of combined approach. So you cannot just deal with the symptoms. You have to deal with the entire disease, which, you know, means, you know, bringing in some form of, you know, security approaches and also some developmental approaches to ta target the root cause of, you know, the crisis. And one area that I need to see us doing well from even the security aspect, from the coercive aspect, is actually in being proactive rather than very reactionary. So we need to actually deploy capacities, intelligence, surveillance, you know, security coordination among, you know, different stakeholders to see that we prevent those attacks from happening, not just to react when they happen. So that's very important for all, for the government to actually adopt. All right, so uh, you talked about uh, using a combined approach. Now you'd agree that uh, you know it, there's no way the security uh, forces can actually be able to end banditry or you know insecurity in Nigeria without the help of the federal or state government. So in your opinion, how can the collaboration between the federal and state government and also these security agencies be strengthened to effectively combat the activities of these criminal gangs in Zamfara and also other affected states? 
Yeah, so actually the need for collaboration between the state, uh, you know, federal states and local governments can never be overemphasized. But we need to also emphasize that this kind of collaboration has to be built on the foundation of mutual trust and common objectives. So in many cases, you see states and federal government having diverse objectives about what kind of approach to adopt. You see federal government saying we don't want to negotiate with bandits. You see states negotiating behind the scenes, or you see state government not negotiating and then federal government negotiating behind the scenes. So they need to have a common objective, common strategy, common approach. Now, okay, fine. We are negotiating, we are not negotiating. Now, what kind of you know, groups are we going to negotiate with and what are the terms of that negotiate and from what position are we negotiating because we need to negotiate from a position of strength, you know, to project a sense of, you know, strength that, okay, we are not just negotiating because we are weak, but we are negotiating because we have some kind of strategic objectives that we want to achieve in securing our communities and providing long term peace and stability, you know, for those communities, not just because we want to appease some certain groups. So this is really important. The federal government needs to have and the state, they need to work you know, in coordination. They need to have that alignment, that strategic alignment. They need to agree on the objectives of what they are trying to achieve. And then they need also to trust each other because I think this kind of distrust is usually fueled by you know, the fact that maybe some states you know, actually are being governed by you know the opposition parties or some kind of you know suspicions you know that is largely political and not you know strategic so i think we need to overcome this we need to see the federal government and the state government they need to trust which you know each other and also they need to you know align their objectives to see that they confront this issue you know from a single point of view not from a diverse one because this kind of distrust and you know um, suspicions yeah. that are emanating from the various stakeholders is what is actually crippling this out. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ahmed Musa Husseini, for joining us uh, on a News Central this morning and also your opinion on this. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much.